In the Bitcoin world, we store transactions in here. So let's say I write a check to Bob. So me, Jean-Luc, I write a check and I say from Jean-Luc to Bob for an amount of three Bitcoins and I sign the check. Note that you can have multiple signatures in case you want three people to approve the funds to be spent inside a company. That's absolutely feasible. They won't be spent as long as there are no three signatures. But in this case, I only need to sign myself and I send these three Bitcoins to Bob. To, to Bob. So I put this check inside the box and the box or the block spreads across the network. And everybody in the network can see if he opens his block, well, that there is the exact same transaction from me to Bob. So everybody sees this information real time. And then another block comes along a couple of minutes later and it spreads all over the network. And then a couple of minutes later, Bob wants to spend his Bitcoins. So what he's going to do is he's going to write a check as well. And he's going to say from Bob to Alice for an amount of one Bitcoin. And he's going to sign it. He's going to store this information inside the block. And then the block will spread on the network. But before other people validate the block, they will have a look and they will say, but does Bob even own one Bitcoin? Can he spend one? And therefore, they will have a look at the previous blocks in the network. And they will realize that in this block, block number one, Bob received three Bitcoins from Jean-Luc. So it's OK for him to spend one Bitcoin. And they will immediately accept as well this transaction on their network. So I mentioned that everything that was written in a blockchain is transparent. And we can actually see it live. So I suggest we go live on the internet and we explore the blockchain. So what we have here is uh, a connection to the blockchain and in this part that is moving here you see transactions happening real time live on network right now so maybe this is someone in china who is sending a transaction to buy drugs to buy drugs maybe it is someone in belgium who sends some money over to a family in the philippines but all of these transactions are visible to the network and what you see on top here are the blocks as you can see they are sequential as i mentioned the blocks is a sequential list uh, of, of blocks, which you can see here. You can also see at what point of time the blocks were created. For example, a block was created five minutes or six minutes ago. You can see it, and that's very important for the time stamping of the information, so that if you put a, some information in a block, you know exactly when it has been created. You can also find some other information there, but we won't have a look at it. It's not really relevant here. So what does this mean? If you remember well, in the old system I described, we have a lot of intermediaries that all have their own accounting system that they need to consolidate with each other. In this new system, the blockchain system, you have, oops, sorry. you have consolidation up front where the information is stored across blocks in real time. So what does this mean? This means that we no longer need accountants to consolidate everything because everything is in there. Do we still need auditors? Maybe, but in any case, in this case, you have auditability up front. So you probably have a software that can run through it easily. Does that mean we will normally need auditors? I don't know, maybe, but what I do know is that the job will be very different.